My biggest takeaway from the Georgia-Texas game, besides Georgia's defensive line looking like the old Georgia's defensive line of years past last year or the year before, which is scary. That is scary for anybody involved in the SEC that plans on or knows they're going to have to play Georgia at any point this season. Anybody in the playoff, anybody like that, that's scary. Their defense looked as good as it's looked all season and looked like a vintage national championship dominant defense against the number one team in the country on the road in the Texas Longhorns. That's the big, That's not my biggest takeaway, but that's a huge storyline. The problem is, and my biggest takeaway, is that that's what the storyline should be. Instead, one of the biggest storylines from this game was the brief appearance of the Texas backup quarterback and famous Arch Manning. Uh, Arch is the backup to Quinn Ewers. Quinn Ewers started the season as the starter. Quinn Ewers played well, got injured. Arch Manning stepped into his place for a couple of games, also played well against a couple of mediocre to bad football teams. Then Quinn Ewers becomes available last week in the Red River Showdown against Oklahoma and looks good, scores a bunch of points. Texas looks dominant as they had all season. And Quinn Ewers is back to being the starter. Arch Manning's back to being the backup. Everyone's on the same page and consensus with that. And then we get into this Texas-Georgia game. And we're approaching the end of the first half. And Texas head coach Steve Sarkeesian decides, you know what? I'm going to swap out my quarterbacks because Quinn Ewers hasn't been putting up the best numbers. Ewers hasn't been delivering great throws combined with the fact that he has absolutely no time to throw the ball. Georgia's in his face, in his grill. Ewers is a shorter quarterback at, I think, six foot or six one. He's a good deep ball guy, but overall, he's a quarterback that needs a nice clean pocket to deliver the ball down the field, as is the case for a lot of quarterbacks. And Steve Sarkeesian decides, you know what? I'm going to swap quarterbacks at the end of the first half, see if I guess the younger guy with not as much experience that's never played a team anywhere near the caliber of a team like Georgia. Let's see if he can go out and do a better job than my top three quarterback in the nation, Quinn Ewers, who's not playing well, but also has no time to throw. And incidentally, as a quarterback, if you're getting smoked or having guys rushing into your face and into your throwing lane on every single play, you're not going to do well. And that's what Quinn Ewers is dealing with. But Steve Sarkeesian decides at the end of the first half, I'm going to go with Arch Manning for this last drive or two. I'm going to throw in the young buck because his name's Manning. And I'm not sure exactly what led to that decision. Again, maybe Ewers came over and, you know, again, you know, what if he was dealing with something, right? We don't know. What I can tell you is that move by Steve Sarkeesian in the Texas Georgia game to bench Quinn Ewers at the end of the first half to throw Arch Manning not just into a game, but into a burning hell pit fire of a game against a top three, if not the best defense in the Georgia Bulldogs and expect anything to change from what Quinn Ewers did for the first quarter and a half. It's insane that he even thought about doing that, let alone actually went through with it and swapped QBs. It's absolutely insane. It's so problematic and it's such an issue and it's this overarching uh, thought process that's found its way and crept its way more regularly into fans' heads and now apparently into coaches' heads that they think, if I just change one dude, it's going to fix all our issues. And a lot of times it's a game-by-game basis. We've already seen it time and time again this year in the college football spectrum in the top 25. We've seen it with Oklahoma. We've seen it with uh, Notre Dame. We've seen it with Michigan. We've seen it now with Texas, where these schools, these teams don't play well as a whole. The pass protection's terrible. The run blocking is terrible. The receivers aren't getting open. The offensive scheme is average to slightly above average, and it doesn't lead to a lot of sustained success. And coaches say, Let's change the quarterback. That'll fix it. Like, nope, no, it won't. It just won't. And for Steve Sarkeesian, for Steve Sarkeesian to be the number, the head coach of the number one football team in the country at the time, at home, a top three quarterback in the nation who'd started for two and a half seasons, played great literally a week ago and took down your rival and pulled a trigger late in this first half of a game against a gauntlet of a Georgia defense. I think anything's going to change. 
with Arch Manning? Yeah, Arch is a pretty good quarterback. He's mobile. But in the two instances that that's ever worked, somehow that carries as much weight as the other 98% of the time when it's a ridiculously dumb decision and it's not anywhere near effective. There's times in the NFL when that happens with the Raiders just swapping QBs between who? Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell, two sides of the same coin. The Patriots swapping mid-game between Mac Jones and Bailey Zappi. Are they identical twins? I don't know. Guess what? It didn't make a difference. Michigan swaps quarterbacks. Notre Dame swaps quarterbacks for a time. Texas does it in the middle of the game. The only time of recent memory that I could ima- uh, remember a backup quarterback coming in and having any semblance of success is literally Tua Tonga Vailoa in the national championship game. And that's because the difference in game plan from the type of quarterback Jalen Hurts was for Alabama and the type of quarterback Tua Tonga Vailoa was was so far apart that it did have the Georgia defense specifically in that one game on their heels. And they prepared for a mobile run first quarterback who was not very accurate and wasn't necessarily a threat to throw the ball versus pretty much the opposite in Tua. And that's, again, probably the only time I remember anything even remotely like that going on and actually working. The rest of the time, it does nothing. And I'm so tired. I'm so sick of it, man. I, I'm I, I'm so tired of these coaches swapping quarterbacks, thinking it's going to do anything. It's not. It's not. It's not. I don't know what Steve Sarkeesian's thinking at Texas, swapping quarterbacks at the end of the first half as the offense struggles. I can understand the sense of urgency. I understand the desire to want to get something going and artificially create a spark. But to do that, not only at any point, like Notre Dame and Michigan and Oklahoma have already done this year, which is bench their starter and bring in another guy, doesn't change anything. The teams still aren't very effective on offense. But for Sarkeesian to do it as the head coach of the number one team in the country in the biggest game of the year, in the middle of the game, with a quarterback like Quinn Ewers, who's top three in the country? That's insane. What kind of message does that send to your team? It shows me you're scared. You're rattled. You were unprepared, overmatched. So many different white flags and panic signs are going up. What an insane and honestly irresponsible thing to do. Because now, what does Quinn Ewers think the rest of the season? He thinks if I have another bad quarter and a half, I'm benched again. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, that'll be effective. Yeah, he'll do well. And even if Sarkeesian or the Texas coaching staff comes out the rest of the way and goes, no, we're going to stick with Quinn. We just wanted to get something, a different look in for the Georgia defense. Quinn's our starter. Okay, say that all you want. You just showed me the opposite. You just showed me you have minimal faith in him, or at least you have the quickest trigger in the history of head coaches. Georgia's defense is unbelievable and played their tails off and were in Quinn Ewers' face every single time he dropped back to throw the ball. He was getting drilled. He had strip sacks. He had no time to throw. And by the way, no receivers were open. So where's he going to throw it? Somehow that's his fault. Somehow swapping quarterbacks is going to change that. Why? Because his last name's Manning? Like, give me a break, dude. Give me a break. I'm so tired of it. It's worked once. It's like legitimately worked and been effective one time ever. And it was the 2018 National Championship game with Alabama where they swapped Tua and Jalen Hurts. And it was such a unique and niche situation with one quarterback who couldn't throw the ball and the defense had prepared for three weeks leading up to the national championship for a mobile only quarterback who barely throws the ball on the field, who's 50, 65% completion rate at his best. And they bring in a left-handed quarterback who doesn't run as much and is extremely accurate down the field and is a pass primary threat. That's the only time it's worked because the discrepancy between the two guys with Jalen Hurts and Tua were so different and so far apart that the defense for Georgia, specifically in that one game, was on their heels. Every other time it hasn't worked, and I'm so tired of head coaches doing that. I'm so sick of it. Didn't you have three weeks, four weeks, six weeks of training camp, of practice, of preparation, of reps, where you have to make these kinds of decisions? And it's one thing, by the way, too, to swap out a linebacker or a safety or a defensive lineman. But to swap out the guy who touches the ball every play on one side of the ball is so insane. 
It's so insane. Here's an idea. Instead of blaming the quarterback, leave him in, change the game plan, do anything you can to throw the defenses off kilter a little bit and protect your quarterback. It's insane. They they bench Quinn Ewers in the middle of the game. Oh, here's an idea. Stop dropping back five step, five step drops, seven step drops, running deep route concepts down the middle of the field. Run the ball until it doesn't work. Run the ball on the outside. Run the ball between the tackles. Have your linemen step up a little bit and make a block or two. Get the ball out in space. Don't you have great athletes? Texas, right? I know Georgia's got great athletes on defense too. Okay, you can't run the ball between the tackles. Got it. Swing the ball outside. Screens, pitch plays, outside handoffs, misdirection. Run the ball. And then I guess if you just can't, then run different route concepts run drags run screens run slants run quick outs run concepts that are not 5 8 12 15 yards down the field that take 3 to 5 seconds to develop because guess what the quarterback's got no time to throw the football and yet somehow that's his fault it's just crazy it blows my mind that that continues to happen i think it's so ridiculous it's so obvious That it's just a panic move. It's a desperation move. It's not a strategic thought. It's not, oh, this will give us an advantage. Oh, like running backs and having a two-headed monster keep one guy fresh, you know, for six plays in a row and then swap them out because they're both equally as effective because we're executing as an entire unit. It's the quarterback. And as good as quarterbacks can be and as as big an impact as they can make being the guy with the football All their effectiveness is eliminated if four other players in their 11-man offensive unit don't do their job. And that's what was happening to Quinn Ewers. And all of a sudden, he gets benched. As soon as he gets benched, now granted it was 23 to nothing there towards the end of the first half between Georgia and Texas. As soon as they swap quarterbacks, the game is over. Over. Like, what does Steve Sarkeesian think? is going to happen when he swaps quarterbacks in the middle of the game with three minutes left in the second quarter when their offense hasn't done jack and they bring in a new quarterback. The entire offensive unit is identical that has done nothing all game, but one dude, yeah, he touches the ball and he's a different player, but one guy is going to change that. Why? Because his last name is Manning? Like, what do you think? Do you think this is like like a Hallmark movie? Like a Disney, like, Movie, the Manning comes off the bench, leads his team to a comeback victory. Like, no, no. The Georgia defense is the same group of guys. And your offensive line that's getting blown on their asses all day, still the same group. And then they start the third quarter and Quinn Ewers is back out there. So is he benched? Is he not benched? Which one is it? And what kind of message does that send to your team? I'll tell you what message it sends, not only to your team, but to the entire country. We're not confident in our guys. We're going to panic when things get a little bit tough. When there's serious adversity, we're going to make a, we're going to make a, uh, what's the word? We're going to make a, a, we're going to make an impulsive decision. We're not going to have any thought behind it. We're not going to take true accountability and find the root cause. Like so many flaws with that, that shows so much weakness from the Texas Longhorns, a weakness that I don't think anybody thought they had, but as it turns out, they do. And now there might be more issues for Texas as the season goes on because they've got film from Georgia. Now, Georgia's got great athletes. Don't get me wrong. But anybody left that's going to play Texas, the defensive unit will get together, pull up the Georgia Texas film and hit play. What do they do? Well, now I I know you got to have size and, and speed and all those things. I get it. But what a disaster for Texas. I mean, what a disaster. Not only did they lose. They kind of got embarrassed and they swapped quarterbacks and panicked the entire time. And it was at home. And it was the first time they got up to number one in in quite a while. Brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. That was that game. Texas was one. Georgia was five. I'm assuming Texas is going to drop down a touch uh, below Georgia, potentially. Um, They'll still be in the top 12, man, but, but they did not look good.